Thanks for joining me. I'm Mrs. Brown and welcome to our lesson on Celilah Falls envisioning uh, reading and writing activities. So for today, it is Monday, March 30th, 2020. We are going to be reading part two of I Wish I'd Seen the Falls. Now from last time, we read part one where we saw grandma talking to her grandson, Chucky, and telling him about Salado Falls. She pulled out some old pictures and she was describing what had happened there. She talked about her, uh, her times there as a child, playing, running, skinning her knees, um, and swimming in the, in the summertime while her, while her parents fish. So here we are, <clears throat> excuse me, grandma, and Chucky are still talking, and she's going to talk about further what happens at Salilo Falls. So just to remind you, we'll have, uh, we'll have the reading prompts and writing prompts at the end of the stories, but I do want you to think about how would you retell this, and I want you to pay attention to the details themselves, seeing if you can envision, seeing if you can make some predictions and what inferences you can have. This is going to be a really short version because I really want you to think about what you would uh, what you would do in your own story as you talk about your own space, and I'll be giving you some pointers and some tips for it as you write. So here we go. And again, Grandma's pictures of Salilo Falls. Grandma says. The fisheries chief at Salilo Falls always warned us to take only what we needed and to let some of the fish get back to where they were born to lay eggs and begin another generation. We were only borrowing the fish and thinking about the future generations so that they would have fish too, she said. In the springtime, it was the spring Chinook that fed us. And they were the most delicious. Grandma laughed as she remembered. Sometimes they'd weigh as much as 100 pounds. They were huge. The salmon would be placed on cedar boughs that were cut into long, thin pieces. The women would pierce the salmon flesh with the cedar sticks for support. And one long piece of cedar went up the center of the cut salmon. Then it would be placed near the fire by digging a small hole where the stick would be pushed into the ground. How could they tell when it was time to turn the fish over to the other side, Grandma? Oh, they would touch the back of the fish, and if it was warm, then it was time to turn it around, she said. The smoked fire gives the fish a wonderful flavor. I wish I knew what Grandma meant. I enjoyed eating fish every day. Grandma always told me it's like brain food. It makes me smart and it helps me remember where I come from. Grandma said that later in the year, more salmon would return. She said coho and blueback, then steelhead, and then finally the fall Chinook would come up the Columbia River. Some of the people would even catch the huge sturgeon. And that is prepared a special way because it is a whole different kind of fish, she told me. Grandma said another delicacy for the tribal people was lamprey or eels. We'd get those and eat some freshly cooked and then dry some for winter use. Celilo Falls provided much food for everyone all year round, she said. My grandmother told me the importance of this place and how everyone treated it with respect. Everyone always thanked the creator for providing us with such a treasure. So we're actually going to stop there. We're going to stop there and we're going to think about what we just read, what we just read together, because Grandma talked about some pretty important things. She talked about a fisheries chief. So that was the leader there at the fishery. Salilo Falls called a fishery. It's where people get fish. It's where people fish. It's where people maintain and take care of the fish. And she talked about only taking what they needed so that they were saving and making sure that future generations would have as much fish as they had now. And so that's the whole philosophy of, of kind of fisheries management for tribal people in the Northwest, really thinking about the future rather than the present. 
She also talked about how cedar was cooked. And I hope that you could envision that. I hope that you could see what they did with the cedar boughs and the fire and, um, and how the fish was roasted on the fire. Um, also, she talked about eating fish every day. Did you know that on average, a Columbia River native person or someone from the Pacific Northwest, a native person eats about 300 pounds of fish a year. That's almost a pound a day. So that is something really to consider as we think about salmon and the salmon runs currently and um, how we're really, really working to make sure that the salmon come back because they are endangered. Grandma talked about a sturgeon a different type of fish that they would catch. She also talked about lamprey or eels, eels about this long. And when you think of eels, you think, Ugh! but actually they're delicious. They're a little oily uh, and, uh, and they would be dried. And oftentimes uh, toddlers would suck on them like a pacifier instead of having those plastic pacifiers. Sounds like it's a lot more delicious than than uh, something plastic or rubber in your mouth. Anyhow, as you're thinking about the story, you've, um, you've, I think, got a little bit more acquainted about what grandma was talking about. And I want you to think about <clears throat> the prompts here. Again, I want you to describe or draw what you read today or what we read together today. I want you to think about what do you think is going to happen next because it's got to come back to the falls again, right? We learned a little bit more about the fishing today, but now it's going to come back to the falls because Chucky says, I wish I had seen the falls. Uh, <clears throat> make some inference about people, how they might feel during this portion of the story. What does grandma feel like? What does Chucky feel like? And you can think about that as you're writing your own story, as you continue to write your story, what is going on in the minds of your characters as you write? And then continue drafting your story, continue using those sensory details that we talked about last time. And, um, and so I wanted to also show you a part of the packet itself. Um, <clears throat> after the story, there are some, there are some comprehension questions that you are welcome to look at and think about. The answers are actually there as well. So the idea is not to get the right answers. The idea is to take a look at what's important. But I especially wanted you to take a look at the story template. With the story template, there are plenty of lines that you can use for your story. And then there are some spaces for you to illustrate. And so I started thinking about using my drawing from last week, and maybe I could just take pieces of it and actually put that, cut them and paste them here, or I could just draw them again. But that would be a nice way for me to illustrate and, and, um, and take my readers along with me on my story. So a really short lesson today so that you can work on actually writing and actually drafting and drawing. I'll be excited to see what you come up with next. I will show you what I come up with and then we are going to finish the story. I wish I had seen the falls. We'll finish that and then we'll talk about the story writing itself. So until next time, I'm Mrs. Brown. Thank you so much for joining us and listening to my story and we'll see you next time. <laughs>